Hey, welcome to Make Anything. My name's Devin, and uh, I just recorded this whole video with the microphone plugged into the wrong port. <sighs> How long have I been doing this? <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. Anyways, today we're gonna talk about the current state of one-click 3D printing. <sighs> cool. In reality, one-click 3D printing is kind of an over-exaggerated buzzword, but it represents the idea that a 3D printer is so easy, so easy, that even the average person could use it. <laughs> That's to say, it's as easy to use as a cell phone, a computer, a 2D printer, or just a printer. A dimensionally inadequate printer. <laughs> Basically, we want really easy 3D printing. It's like the El Dorado of the 3D printing world. Every company wants to reach that point of just, boom, super easy 3D printing, anyone can do it, and suddenly it's mainstream. It's funny, my college internship was actually at a little company called New Matter, and a year earlier in 2014, they'd made headlines for releasing their Mod T printer and raising over $600,000 on Indiegogo, which was huge at the time. And this printer was under $400. It was meant to be that really easy, one-click, super simple 3D printer, like the iPhone of 3D printers. They actually teamed up with Frog Design, which was the firm that designed a lot of early Apple products. And they helped make this super beautiful, polished looking 3D printer. And it promised that one-click 3D printing experience. You had a web store where you could find a design you liked, click print on the website, and by Wi-Fi, it would just be sent to the printer and start printing. So that was like a big deal back then. There were a lot of big promises with that Mod T 3D printer and unfortunately, it just didn't hold up to the expectations. So New Matter is no longer with us. But the idea of super simple one-click 3D printing is still not dead. And that's what brings us here with me sitting next to this printer which is called the BQ Thunder. At first glance, you might think this is just another one of those CR-10S Pro clones. And in a lot of ways, it is very similar. It does have some nice improvements that I really like, as well as some things holding it back. I'll get to that in a minute. But the real big deal about this printer is that it's the first printer that has integrated printing on demand through the My Mini Factory app. If you know this channel, surely you know my mini factory because I use them to host all my 3D printing files. They're great because they have this studios program where I can still earn some ad revenue while giving out my files for free. And they also have a premium store now which lets me sell some of my really nice files. But beyond just hosting 3D prints, my mini factory does quite a bit more. If you haven't checked out the My Mini Factory app yet, now's a great time. It's free, it's available on iOS and Android, and it's got a lot of cool features. It lets you easily scroll through all the latest prints, the most popular prints. It's visually laid out in a way that's similar to Instagram. It's easy to digest. It also lets you easily take photos of prints and share those with the community. And it's got that print on demand feature built in. So, Print on demand is something that My Mini Factory actually supports on several printers, but it mostly relies on a third party plugin for OctoPrint. And that means you need the Raspberry Pi, you need to install OctoPrint on it and format it and set it up with your 3D printer. So it's still fairly technical, but this BQ Thunder is special because it has that functionality already built in. So all you have to do is navigate through the little touch screen here on the front of the printer and you just put in your Wi-Fi password and scan a QR code and bam, now they are one. Once things are set up, it's really easy to print. You just need to make sure your printer's on, but then you don't really have to even be near your printer to send something to print. So why don't we start here at my My Mini Factory profile and go ahead and print something. Certain models like my Pineapple Springo won't have the option to print, presumably because they're too difficult for the automatic slicer. But this non-Springo version of the pineapple does have the option to print. I'll hit that print button, which takes me to this little virtual print bed. Then from this drop-down menu, I can select my printer, the BQ Thunder. And while there aren't many options, I can go ahead 
and scale this down to 0.5 so that we do a little half scale pineapple. Then from this list, I can opt to only print the bottom half of the pineapple since I want to print it in two separate colors. That's why I split it up in the first place. And well, it's pretty much ready to go. So now we just hit the print this object button, which will put this specific job in my 3D printer queue. And then from there, I can just hit print to actually send it to the printer. After maybe three seconds, the screen on the printer will start showing the file and it'll start uploading over Wi-Fi. So I'm only right next to the printer for the sake of showing both the phone and the machine, but really I could be doing this from a completely different room. As soon as that file gets downloaded, it will automatically heat up and start printing. For the time being, I think the general settings for every print are the same, with about a 10% infill and two perimeters or shells around the object. There's always a raft underneath each print which isn't exactly necessary for a model like this, but it does increase the success rate. Here's the finished print, and thanks to the magnetic build plate, it's really easy to just pop this off. Then I just have to peel off the raft from the bottom of the print, and we're left with a really good looking model. Of course, switching the filament is still a manual process, but from there, I can go ahead and print the second half of the pineapple all through the My Mini Factory app once again. The second half of this pineapple came out looking equally flawless, and well, using that Aquamarine Polyalchemy Elixir PLA doesn't hurt. Overall, it's hard to complain about a print that looks this good. By the way, the bottom here is printed with Rep Wrapper filament. Yellow, obviously. I also used Print On Demand to make this quarter scale version of the pineapple with some Filamentum PLA and it also came out looking pretty good, although maybe a little bit stringier on the top. Still hard to beat. So this printer can definitely put out some great looking prints, but I really wanted to test the capabilities of this print on demand feature. So the next thing I did was try a model with some supports. This tiny version of my VR sculpted Tuss Warrior. Now, while this model did print to completion, there is some damage on the left arm here where the supports didn't quite do the job. Though I can't say I'm too surprised because printing this in the past, I did have to use custom supports. Next, I decided to try an even more insanely detailed print with this Voronoi version of my stepped bin. As you can see, this print would take over 100 hours and it's a massive 350 megabyte piece of G-code. I was able to send this object to print and after two hours, it did upload the full 350 megabytes. But from there, well, the screen just froze and I wasn't able to do anything but turn the printer off. So I guess that's a bit over the line. Now, even with simpler parts, I did run into problems here and there. For example, with this lock puzzle, which is complicated but shouldn't require supports, the app decided to flip the body upside down for whatever reason and also it wanted to add a bunch of support material on the inside. There is a lot going on in there, but in reality, this print does not require support material. So that was kind of a bummer. You can see on the right here that the key part did print really nicely with the automatic generated supports, but for the actual body of the lock, I had to slice that in Simplify 3D the way you traditionally would and that way I was able to print it and it did come out looking absolutely fantastic. So in this case, it was the app's slicing algorithm that failed. I had basically the same problem with this Marmalade Reef file. This is another really complicated looking print that could print without support material, but using print on demand forced supports for this print and therefore I had to cancel it because I know this print wouldn't work with support material. Now I was determined to see how complicated of a print I could pull off using print on demand. And the next thing I tried was one of my VR sculpted Ram skulls. Here you can see that the horns came out absolutely beautifully printed with this nightshade elixir PLA. And for the head of the skull, I decided to use Polyalchemy's limestone effects filament. This is definitely the more challenging part of the print. And once again, the app automatically reoriented the print, which is kind of annoying, but hey, it actually did end up printing successfully. Although with more support than a properly oriented print would have required. 
Now it's time to remove the support material, and I noticed that it's just more difficult in general to remove support with this Polyalchemy Elixir filament. Maybe it's the additives that they use to get this shiny finish that makes the filament a little more bendy and less brittle, which does make it harder to remove the filament. The process was especially nerve-wracking with this head part because there are some very thin parts to this model. In the end, I was able to get all the support material out, but there were a few sacrifices here and there, some tiny parts that did snap. Luckily, I have my 3D pen, so I was able to use that same filament to basically fill in the gaps and repair those little tiny parts that I messed up while taking out the support material. I also used the pen to attach the horns to the skull, and while it did take a bit of extra post-processing, I was left with this really cool ram skull. Once again, as you can see, the print quality is absolutely fantastic off of this printer, even though that my mini factory slicing algorithm did make some questionable choices. Well, that's about as much testing as I got in so far with this print on demand feature, but I also wanted to share a little bit of my thoughts on this printer. By no means is this a full 3D printer review, but considering this is the lone printer to have that print on demand integrated into it, I figure it's worth telling you what's good and what's not so good. For one thing, as I've said over and over again, the print quality is fantastic. You really can't expect much better than this from this type of printer. It's also worth mentioning that this printer does require some assembly. Although if you can assemble an IKEA bed frame, you can probably assemble this printer, no problem. It took me about an hour, and the only problem I really had with assembly was this bed being a little bit wobbly. That's just a matter of tightening these eccentric nuts on the bottom, and yeah, it's a quick fix if you know what you have to do. Once I was done assembling this, I got to try out the automatic bed leveling and this uses an interesting system that I haven't personally used before. It involves this little piece of circuitry that plugs in and sticks on top of the nozzle, and that turns it into a little leveling probe. With that connected, you can run the bed leveling process, which tests, I believe, 25 points all over the printer, and it uses that information to make sure that the print goes down nice and level, even if the build plate isn't completely flat. After the leveling process, I was able to fine tune the Z-height using this baby step function. And once that was honed in, well, let's just say I haven't had to worry about bed leveling whatsoever since. Here you can see my very first print, that classic Benchy model. And really there's very little to complain about. As I mentioned, this flexible build plate is super nice. It's honestly one of my favorite build surfaces that I've printed on. And yeah, the print just looks immaculate. So from receiving my package to my very first print, it was pretty much smooth sailing, but that didn't last too long. That's the sound of a failing stepper motor and BQ did have to send me a new stepper motor and driver for that Y axis. Another problem I ran into was this giant crack that formed along the flexible build plate after I had a PETG print sticking a little bit too hard. I guess I bent that plate a bit too much and that just led to that crack running down the entire plate. My final grievance with this printer has to do with the extruder block. It's basically just this block of metal. It has no lever for manually releasing that gear. So basically you're forced to use the filament loading and unloading command through the printer UI, which isn't the worst, but it's a lot slower than just releasing the gear and pulling the filament out. But what's more annoying is that the filament has to enter this extruder block just perfectly in order to actually feed into the tube, otherwise it jams. So I found myself constantly having to feed the filament in and out, straightening it by hand and cutting it over and over again with the clippers until it just happened to enter perfectly right so that the filament goes straight into that PTFE tube. Then once the filament actually reaches the hot end, the extruder gear starts clicking, trying to push the filament through, 
and while it doesn't actually cause any noticeable problems, it is a bit concerning. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, this printer does produce some undeniably beautiful prints, it's got some neat features, and while I wouldn't call this my absolute favorite printer, I can't say I'm unhappy with it either, and for some people, I think that integrated print-on-demand feature could make this BQ Thunder worth the little roadblocks I had here and there along the way. So, there you have 3D printing on demand using the My Mini Factory app. Like I said, clearly the uh, new matter print on demand didn't work as well as it could have. I've also used the Dremel uh, Idea Lab or Print Cloud service, and that's also not super polished. This is probably close to one of the best that I've used in terms of for the specific files that actually work really well with it, you get perfect prints and you don't have to touch a setting. It's actually pretty close to one-click printing. Clearly there is still work that can be done to improve this, mostly in terms of print setup. And uh, whether that's done by an algorithm or by a person, it could use some work. I think it should rely on the creators who are uploading the files because if you're designing and printing files yourself, you probably know your way around the settings and slicer stuff. So it would be nice to, as, as the creator, when I upload something, be able to say specifically for each individual item, this is how it should be oriented, maybe even put custom supports in it, and all the specific print settings so that it will print as good as it possibly can and use the least material necessary. That would be awesome, but I also understand where things are at right now. Uh, I'm just really glad that they're at least trying this out and, you know, learning from it out in the real world. Alright, I'm about to lose my voice, so this is probably a good time to wrap things up. I showed you 3D printing on demand with the My Mini Factory app. I think it's really great. It's definitely got a long way to go, but I'm just glad it's happening. Um, you know, hopefully I'll do another video in the near future where I show you true and flawless 3D printing on demand. But this is where we stand today. So let me know in the comments what you guys think in terms of the current state of printing on demand. How soon do you think it's going to be that easy? What needs to happen for it to be that easy? And how, how should we do it? Let us know. Leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more down the road. But that's it for now. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. And as always, stay inspired.